Hannah now supports vector masks. Vector masks give you incredible creative freedom without doing permanent changes to your original images. They're perfect for creating clean compositions, interactive elements, and engaging animations. In this video tutorial, we'll show you how to use this awesome feature, showing you how to create dynamic and visually striking effects. Vector masks in HANA allow you to precisely control which parts of your content are visible. Everything inside the mask shape is shown, while anything outside is hidden. With vector masks in HANA, you can create clean, precise cutouts with vector precision. Let me walk you through creating and working with vector masks in HANA using this example. First, create a frame. Add a rectangle and change the fill for an image. Now, let's create this X shape using two rectangles and booleans. You can add masks using two different methods. First, we'll show you how to use the mask button in the outliner. The mask object affects all the shapes placed above it so we can move the shape we created above the mask. This X will be our mask, so with the shape selected, click the Mask button here. Now let's try the second method. Using the context menu, I'll select both my vector shape and the objects I want to mask. Right-clicking brings up the context menu where I'll select Use as Mask. This way, HANA automatically creates a group with the proper masking hierarchy. Now let's animate it by creating a new state then adjusting the rotation and adding a new start event with a linear transition. Set the duration to 5 and make sure the loop is set to infinite. And this is the final result. Let's go through another great example. In this design, we combined masks with a video layer and a follow event to achieve this immersive interaction. Create the base frame, same as before, and let's change the color to black. Now let's add a rectangle and adjust the size. Make sure it's aligned to the center and replace the color with a video. Then, with the Vector tool, let's create this goggle shape. And add color so we can see the shape a bit better. It's always a good idea to name everything to keep our scene clean. Move the mask shape below our video and click on the mask button. Now, when we hit play, we can see the video playing inside the goggles. We also duplicated the goggle shape two more times, adjusted the size, and gave them a thin white stroke. This is to create a sort of edge for the goggles. With both selected, go to the booleans modifier and set to subtract. Add color and inner shadows to give a sense of depth. and add more details like text, a small button, and a rectangle with a gradient to simulate a shadow. For the interaction, select your rectangle with the video and add a follow event. Set the damping to 5 and adjust the radius limits to 10. Hit play and see how the video moves slightly following the cursor. It's a design that we like a lot, it feels very immersive and visually interesting. For the last example, we want to show you how to create this interactive design using multi-layer masks. We have this frame with a simple black text in the center as a base. Let's duplicate the text and change the color. We'll use blue this time. Make sure that the blue text is below the black text. Now add an ellipse. Set the color to black. Duplicate and change the color to white. 
let's move them in the middle of both text layers, making sure the white ellipse is below the black ellipse. Select your base frame and change the color as well. Apply the mask to this ellipse and see how the mask affects the text above, revealing the layers below. Add a follow event to both ellipses, keeping the default settings. This way we can use our cursor to see the text underneath. For final details, you can add 3D projections and rectangles on top, applying progressive blur to them to add depth, which looks pretty nice. Before we wrap up, here are some professional tips. Use Boolean operations to create complex mask shapes. Mix them with events to create immersive designs. Combine multiple masks for sophisticated effects. Try using 3D projections with your mask to add depth. And that's it for today's tutorial. Try experimenting with vector masks in your next project, and don't forget to check out our documentation for more detailed info. See you next time.